Okay, in guys. one mile. Use the left three lanes to stay to the left to I-210 West toward Pasadena. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today I am going to dim sum with some old friends. I'm super excited. I haven't seen a couple I haven't seen a couple of them in like three years, I think. Like before COVID, so yay! <laughs> um yeah, so uh Oh my gosh, I drank too much herbal tea last night, so my my um, ulcer's probably bad. Uh, but um, yeah, me and Miss B were um, singing um, like Les Miserables <laughs> while baking last night, hence I'm like super tired. But um, yeah, like this week I've been on like a Les Miserables high. <laughs> like, it Stay is to the such... left to I-210 West toward Pasadena. It is such a good, like, musical. Like, someday I'll have the patience to read the whole novel, I guess. But I learned that um, the the um, whole story is like the Book of Romans. Like, it's like the battle between the law and grace. Um, which, don't fact check me. I have to read Romans. Um, but like the um, the the cop in Les Miserables, he's trying to catch. So the cop is named um, uh, Javert. Javert, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm like trying to sing in my head to make sure I'm getting it right. And I'm Javert, yeah, um, yeah. So the cop is named Javert, and the the protagonist is named Jean Valjean. So Javert like tries to catch Jean Valjean because uh, he stole like a loaf of bread um, to help someone that else that was poor. But Continue straight for 20 minutes to Fair Oaks Avenue, North Marengo Avenue. So uh, Javert is, um, represents the law because um, he's always trying to like catch you, you know, like, like there's a lyric is like, um, five years for what you did, you know, he's always like remembering the past and um, like calling him like, um, um, what was his number? Like his prison number was, um, um, don't forget me, uh, 30601, I forgot his, the number, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to sing this again, don't you forget me. 24601 I don't know maybe that maybe that's someone's zip code I remember <laughs> but anyway so Javert is always like recounting like Jean Valjean's sins you know like look what you did when you were poor but then Jean Valjean like he there was a moment like the the priest he um like he steals from the priest and then he gets caught but then the priest actually gives him all the things that he stole and that's just like a um, symbol of grace right because grace is like um, God doesn't give you what you deserve but he gives you like all these amazing things like um, Jesus dying on the cross um, which is like not what you deserve but also like more you know so that's like grace right so Jean Valjean like he like lives on this grace he like turns from being this like beggar and like like literally throws away like rips the paper of his identity um as this like poor stealing beggar and then becomes like a mayor and then he starts like helping the poor and like rescuing cosette you know who who sang like castle in the uh, castle in the clouds you know um so his whole life is like based on grace and um in the end, um, Javert, he, I think, experiences, like, um, Jean Valjean, like, being great, gracious to him. He doesn't kill him when he has the opportunity to. So, instead, like, um, Javert kind of, like, self-destructs and, like, kills himself, you know? And, like, Romans, it's like, there's, like, a new covenant with Jesus, right? Like, the old law is, like, you know, done for it, like, like, because, um, Something like um, uh, when when your spouse dies, you know, like that contract of marriage is done for. So then you um, you are free to marry someone else, that kind of thing. So it's like 
that old law is like dead, you know? And um, literally like Javier dies. So I was just like, oh my gosh, this is like the Book of Romans. So um, yeah, like the, I just liked the songs growing up because um, my, my brother, I think he like played it in band and the, that kind of stuff. But I just like the songs, but then now it's like taken on like a whole new level, you know, um, of, you know, uh, you know your your sins are forgiven. Um, they're um, as far um, from you as like um, you know the east is from the west, that kind of thing. So I just love um, Les Misérables. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna go eat some. Uh, I'm real. I really love leaf rice. Like um, dim sum has like uh, like this rice ball that's like wrapped in leaves. It's like the the Canto um, tamale, <laughs> and I love tamales too. So, yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. I used to go to school in Pasadena, and um, specifically, I interned in um, downtown Pasadena. So, coming back to these empty streets brings back so many happy, happy memories. Like um, huh? Persian rugs or something. India, Persia, oh. India, China. India, China, everything. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Day. <laughs> my friend Missy is gonna crack up because she says that I'm kind of like a um, Victorian aristocrat like <laughs> I think my dream would probably be you know like to ride in a chariot and like um, you know gossip all day and knit and play a harp <laughs> and um, yeah like I think I like aside from being like a digital artist, sometimes I just want to push that all aside and just, you know, just be, you know, totally analog. <laughs> so um, I'm taking um, harp lessons and this is kind of big for me because I'm very bad at learning instruments because I hate practicing. Like I, um, I learned piano growing up, but like my teacher would be like, oh my gosh, Kay, why don't you practice? And then she would always like nail me on like my nails, you know, literally. Um, but it's funny because like I have this new harp teacher and she's quite a bit younger. And then she's just like, um, Kay, I think it'd be good if like you would cut your nails <laughs> so then the strings would like vibrate better. And then I was like, I was like going back to my like my piano like... <laughs> days I was like wow nothing has changed because when I quit piano I like literally I was like I'm gonna get like half inch nails and like get like you know like all these rhinestones just to rebel because for years I couldn't do that you know 
but we're back here. We're back to short, <laughs> short dip acrylic, whatever nails, you know. But I, I'm, I'm really like learning this harp thing. Like, um, I got this from, um, it's a website called Harpsicle Harps, and you could get like um, these, uh, these um, either like a sharp harp, like a sharpsicle or a flatsicle. And I got, I think, one that was like. I forgot what it was called. I think it's like the whole, oh, the whole spiel where like these levers, you you pull and push them down, and then it changes like the flatness or the sharpness. You know, I'm still learning, right? Um, and um, from my first class, uh, she taught me like you kind of hold your hands like like penguin gloves, you know, like or penguin uh, flippers. Um, so as you're playing the scale, um, your your um, you're plucking with my index finger and then as I'm plucking like all these fingers follow and then your thumb kind of makes like this rainbow like art kind of thing and also got my first heart book literally called first heart book and um, we're gonna play a scale um, and you're gonna keep me honest because my class is in like an hour and I have to learn the scale and um, you're gonna see me practice. So this, I think the red strings are C and then the blue strings are F, right? So it says, play with the right hand, singing the names of the notes. I'm not gonna sing for you. <laughs> okay, this is middle C. And then we're gonna hold our elbow slightly up, I think. Still trying to remember to rotate my thumb. It's very hard. And I could see it on the camera. Okay, and then I think the left hand is like the bass, um, like in piano as well. So we're gonna go lower. Yeah, so these songs are funny because the there's like lyrics to these songs. It's like, see my harp, hear me play. I will practice every day. <laughs> no, Kay's going to practice an hour before class. <laughs> yeah, this is totally bringing back some piano trauma. <laughs> um. Anyway, I love um, chatting with you. I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. So I'm going to grab some Stay Wet paper. The brand is Masterson. Um, they do, um, they, there is a um, more yellow side and more white side. And I believe the white side is one of those up. But obviously, when you're dunking it in hot water, it doesn't matter. I'm going to sure it's hot water. So this goes under the um, acrylic, so um, I'll show you later the sponge of cold water I have for it, and it, um, the sponge seeps into the paper as you paint, so your acrylic lasts a little longer while we're waiting for hot water. <laughs> Look at this cute vase um, from Jay. <laughs> he, um, I made this a while back, but I really like it. I put um, some of these like um, uh, fragrance sticks in there for when people come over. <laughs> this is gonna take a while. Okay. Yeah, some hot water. And um, put the drain on because um, this is gonna soak. I think we should make it that hot. Um, it should soak for like 15 minutes. So I'm actually 
gonna um, soak the paper in my red box here. So then the paper lies flat. That should be better. So I'll let that sit for 15 minutes. Get the day started. So this is what we got. Wipe this paper a little more dry, and then you dunk this in cold water. And um, actually, I have this flipped. So you want the um, you want the bumpy side on the bottom and the flat side on the top. So this is cold water. So this got like medium hot water. And then now you can put your paints on top and know that it'll stay wet, literally. Stay wet palette. And then um, while I'm doing other things, I'm gonna try to put this. Yeah, this, historically this <laughs> red lid has never really stayed up very well. So sometimes I get like a um, rubber, big rubber band, like one of those ones you get for um, figure drawing. And then you kind of seal it down. So yeah, that's a master sink house. Hey guys, so here is my progress for the Revelation 4 picture. There's the throne of God, the four seraphs, the man, the ox, the lion, and the eagle. Um, if you can remember from last week, I, I had them all like in a mirror um, because um, the Bible had this like metaphor of um, the mirror and how it reflects you know um your soul or something like that but instead i i put it back onto my original idea and um made some this like gold frame around it um it's like a simple frame um i put some kind of um, bevel effect on it in layer styles and um i put a texture on it this one is just some random like um grass or bush texture and kind of add some grit to um, that frame already. Um, so yeah, this is all a uh, very rough. Um, I started, um, obviously I haven't put the crowns um, that I sketched out from last week on to these hands yet. Um, what I was focusing on was um, John, the Apostle John on the left, and the angel to the right. Um, so in the story, um, John, he's on the island of Patmos, but he's, um, he's, he sees this vision of um, Jesus, um, I think as like the Lamb of God with like a ton of eyes and a ton of horns. Um, but he, he starts weeping because um, there is a scroll with seven seals. So I, I put this kind of scroll here um, with, so, so John is crying because no one can open the seven seals of this scroll, which each seal, once you open it, it kind of unlocks a, um, an angel that kind of brings about the end of the world so the whole point why John is crying is he he's sad that I think the world just will keep on going on the way it is with like all the disaster and war and suffering and um, if no one can open the seal then we'll just keep going on like this so um, the angel comes and is like hey like don't cry like the Lamb of God, he's able to 
open all these seals and bring about like the end of the world so um i i have been um trying to you know um paint these two guys um let's see let's see what i can show you because <laughs> it is so rough um I um I don't really want to do a head tutorial because I'm not very <laughs> comfortable in my own <coughs> um head anatomy. But let's see where this goes. Um so I, I put in these ribbons and how I put in these ribbons is um I usually do like a path. Um, so I created a path, paths for these, um, ribbons. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, there could be seven, um, if you, if the guys don't block them. Um, and then what I do is I, um, command click, selects the ribbons, and, um, that's how I colored them. So I made a new layer. I called it scroll ribbons. And then um, I I dropped alt, clicked this red that I decided would be a great foreground color, and then I just painted it in. And then um, I have a, a a blur brush, so what I do um, I usually go here. Um, I click a diagonally left up. So you get a brighter color that is desaturated. So whenever you go up and left, like in a diagonal, you'll get a brighter color and also a desaturated color. So I go something like that. And then to change the hue, I will go here. So I want something more yellow. So, and um, it's, almost automatic for me to do that now um, when I'm painting, um, when there is a yellow white light source to go up, left, and then change the hue here to towards a yellow. So um, when you do that more and more, you'll just get used to it. So I'm gonna paint in the highlight to that ribbon which I'm not happy with. I'm gonna grab some of this yellow here. And then the seals um, probably would go on top. And they're probably like a red color. Like, you know, like the kind you get in like a um, envelope, on top of an envelope, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of painting everything on one layer, which is horrible, but this is just rough, so. I'm not happy with this setup. <laughs> I have lost my magic select or whatever it's called, my selection tool. Let's see, where did it go? Sometimes I understand now when teachers are teaching and they're like, is the tool I always use and I can't find it. Duh. And then like the class like stares at them while they're struggling for like a long time. It's so funny. Where did I get? Oh, okay, there you go. Magic wand tool. Ugh. Done. Does that do that? Where did it go? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Photoshop 2023, 24. Okay, I'm going to, um, whenever I wanna make a new layer with a selected object, I go Command J, so I'm on a Mac. Um, and then these I lab label as seals. I'm gonna put it on top of my scroll ribbons. See if I like my old scroll ribbons better. Yeah, I like my old scroll ribbons better. Okay, so. There we go. 
think I'll make the seals like a bright red. So go back here. Okay, so when I want to color something that is already selected, I go to this grid here. Um, or sorry, when I want to color something that the shape I'm almost happy with, um, I will, like I have these seal shapes, right? So I press this grid here, and then when I paint with it, it'll retain that shape. And then I release it. Um, I think I want them to be like ovals. Um, so how should I do this? Um, I think I'll use a pen tool. Um, I'm not gonna use the oval selection because um, they're rotated. So yeah, everything is kind of quick and dirty. I'm using a, <laughs> I'm just using like my touchpad on my laptop because um, this is kind of like my happy side project I do when I want to turn my mind off. <laughs> so I don't want to like, you know, like clutter it with, you know, hooking up a Cintiq. Okay, so I'm going to erase out the outside of this by inverting my selection. And I'm going to paint back in the white of the scroll color. So a lot of um, cleanup for when you're doing um, a Viz Dev painting is just, you know, um, painting the underneath of an object and um, making sure that layers beneath other things are clean. So then um, the, the good practice of that is, um, so if you ever show your art director and he's like, hey, I want like these seals to be like, you know, um, I don't know. I want them to be 36 seals, you know, then you can like easily move these seals, like um, multiply them or something like that. So there's no like gap. Um, yeah, so it's always good practice. Um, to clean up things even though they won't be seen. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that there um, for now. Obviously people will just look at the face and care about the face. So always prioritize the face and the hands first. You definitely have to look at some reference um, for muscles and um, proportion and things, and maybe even guy m male hairstyles, you know. <laughs> um, the benefit of like how I'm how I'm painting right now is um, I'm using a solid brush, and then um, to make kind of more decisive um, strokes with just my. Um, numpad or sorry my touchpad is just to um like click oh sorry why is it not clicking okay yeah it's just to click oh okay there's a layer that i'm not seeing okay there we go let me flatten that command e to flatten okay so I'm just clicking and then shift and then clicking. So, um, and then small bracket for smaller brush and big bracket for bigger brush. So when I, when I, and then um, option for eyedropper. So when I click shift and then click again, it makes like um, straight lines. So I, I can be more decisive than if I'm using a, um, a Wacom tablet, you know. Okay, so I think I want some more dimension on his cheek. And I probably have to go back to my sorrow head to um, remember some of these planes that I'm blanking out on. That's okay.
and then um, I try to paint with the whenever I press zero um, it'll get that full color but if I want a half between that I'll press five and get the middle between that color so yeah this has been pretty meditative for me um, when I just kind of want to um, do a personal project and um, cause I'm, I'm doing a second class in Blender and it's, it's tough, like learning new software all the time. <laughs> I think, um, I'm definitely a visual learner or, um, like I can't really listen to a teacher talk and absorb that way. Um, I'm reading this book called, um, it's by Adam Gopnik. It's called The Real Work on the, Mas on the Mystery of Mastery. And it's like kind of giving me, like enlightening me on why it's so easy for some people to pick up new skills and harder for others. Like what is like the, the art of learning, you know? Like there is a right way to learn and the wrong way. And for me, I think, like watching a teacher do a tutorial is very hard for me like what I'm doing right now it, it might be really hard for you to pick pick it up but um, for me sometimes I just have to literally follow along a, a recorded video like step by step and stop every like <laughs> every five seconds to see you know what key the teacher is selecting and it's very humbling <laughs> um, so it's it's really relaxing for me to like figure out the spirals of this guy's hair and you know um some yeah i think it's it's finding the balance of what makes you feel comfortable um so that you feel like you are making progress but also um you know uh making those small steps um like me learning blender so you know that you are pushing yourself um and you're not gonna stay um stagnant so that's a hard battle for me <laughs> okay so i'm just blending probably have to figure out this um, foreshortened arm of the angel. What that would look like. much <laughs> but at least maybe this shows the <laughs> art is art takes a long time to make <laughs> all those instagram stories are fake it takes forever art takes forever <laughs> I guess I will talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.